might have life and have life more abundantly and have life eternally. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Holy Spirit speaking to anybody. Anybody? Hallelujah. Robert? Yes, he says we all need to be thankful for this Thanksgiving week. That he loves us so much that he lets us live here in peace in, in our towns and our cities. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for his Holy Spirit that lives in each one of us. Amen. That we can be thankful for our families and for God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. What a Savior. We owe it all to him, right? Amen. David, when we were praying up here, <clears throat> when I opened my eyes, looked at you. I'm looking at you back there. God just said to encourage you. You know, don't doubt him. Encourage, encourage you. God wants you to know that he's the way. You don't have to look for another. Amen? Amen. Amen. And he sees you and he's with you in every trial, every tribulation. So just know that. Amen. Roger, come here. I got it. Um, I got a couple things here. Uh, no. Look, wrong Roger. Tall Roger. You're going to come pretty soon here in the. <clears throat> and I'll tell you what, uh, he, Roger's standing in for somebody. I want you to stretch your hands up here towards, towards Sherry and towards Roger because um, <clears throat> you're the closest man that I know to Donnie. So we're going to anoint you today. Donnie's, Donnie's doing good. Except for one thing. He keeps throwing up. And he's got, you know, he's aspirated again. And God said to anoint you and pray for Donnie that, that whatever's causing it be revealed this week. Amen. Amen. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we anoint Robert on behalf of Donnie. Father, we speak to whatever is causing him to throw up, Lord, and, and, and cause him to, to, to relapse, Father. Just thank you that that this is that last hurdle that he needs to get over. And we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Father, we call him totally whole, totally healed. Father, thank you that whatever it is is going to reveal itself this week. Father, we're going to see, we'll see the glory and the, uh, and the, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living here. And Father, we give you thanks and praise for it right now. Thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha. Thank you for your word that says, Is any sick among you call the elders of the church, anoint them with oil. Pray the prayer of faith and they shall be healed. And Lord, we call God a healed right now, Father. In Jesus' name, he's going to come out and, and be whole and serve you and do what you called him to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I got one other thing. I need a volunteer. I'll trap somebody. I need to... <laughs> You'll volunteer? Well, you can sit right there and volunteer. You're probably a good one, Spike. You got it. Debbie Nazer had knee surgery this week, so if you're volunteering that you and Linda can make them a plate of food at the dinner to, after after service, and you know where everybody lives, you drop it off to them. Tell them we're thinking about oh, it. Yeah. We love them. Amen. All right. Anybody else? Have something on your heart? Praise the Lord. Our ushers are going to come. We're going to receive our tithes and offerings this morning. You can be seated. Yep, yeah, Michaela's going to come and and she's going to sing a couple of songs for us. Uh, excited. Uh, I'll tell you a story about Mickey. It was about, how many years ago was that at camp? You were just 11, I think, weren't you? Just old enough, barely old enough. To, she was barely old enough to go to camp. And that camp has a talent show. And I didn't know she had any talent. <laughs> Nobody else did. And uh, <clears throat> she got up there. I'm going to... She said she wanted to sing. I said, well, everybody else is singing. And not, a, not all of them are very good, I'll tell you that. I mean, just being an awful disclosure. But Mick, Michaela got up there, and I mean, she rocked it. So, uh, singing for the Lord. So, it's, uh, it's a good thing she's going she's gonna to bless us with a couple of songs today. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we give today, Father, thank you that 
that you are the one who has given us the ability to gain wealth. We know that you are our Jehovah Jireh, you are our provider. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. And Lord, as we honor our covenant that we have with you today through the blood of Jesus Christ, we thank you that when we give, your word says, when we give our tithes, your word says that you will hold back the destroyer. And when we give offerings, your word says that you will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we can't contain. Amen. And so, Father, we just stand on your word today. We proclaim it. Lord, as we give, we don't give to get back, but we give to you because we love you and we want to give cheerfully today. Yes. Father, with a good attitude, knowing that it's all yours anyway. Father, thank you for that. I pray a blessing on every home today. Every, every place where pe these people dwell, Lord, I pray that the Spirit of the Lord would rest in that place, Lord, and their neighbors will know that they're blessed because they know your Son as Savior and Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to do two songs. Um, the first song I'm going to sing is First by Lauren Daigle, and the second one we've sang here, it's called Oceans by Hillsong. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I found you in the 
ocean and sea, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When ocean drives my soul. God's given you a gift to them, Hallelujah. Be a good steward every day. I can't tell you how much courage it takes to do that. Yes. A lot. A whole bunch. I don't know where I can see it on my glasses for. That's all. You look better now. That's a good thing, right? Oh, yeah, the kids can go. I'm sorry. Bye, kids. How are we doing today? Oh, okay. Isaiah and Grandpa got the same shirt on. <laughs> That's cool. I found something that I want to read you. It's not really, I kind of it goes along with my sermon, but you ever, you ever run across something that you have to share with somebody? You, got, you know Abraham Lincoln is the guy who established the last Thursday of November as uh, Thanksgiving Day and a national holiday. He did that, I believe, in 1863 in the midst of the Civil War um, to bring healing to the nation. And <clears throat> there are some of our, there are sometimes people say things, you hear the historians, and they, they say that Abraham, wasn't, Mr. Lincoln wasn't a, pre, a Christian or he was a skeptic. And I found something today about, about Abraham Lincoln being a skeptic. By, uh, written by his very good friend, probably his best friend, um, a fellow named Joshua Speed. And, and it says, it says, Joshua Speed was a close friend of Abraham Lincoln, a skeptic. When both were young men, he later published a small volume called Reminiscence of Abraham Lincoln, 
which includes a story from 1864 when he visited Lincoln in Washington. And this is Mr. Speed speaking. I have often been asked what were Mr. Lincoln's religious opinions. When I knew him in early life, he was a skeptic. He had tried hard to be a believer, but his reason could not grasp and solve the great problem of redemption as taught. He was very cautious never to give expression to any thought or sentiment that would, that would grate harshly upon Christian's ear. <clears throat> For a sincere Christian, he had great respect. He often said that the most ambitious man might live to see every hope fail, but no Christian could ever live to see his fail because fulfillment could only, be, could only come when life ended. But this was a subject we never discussed. The only evidence I have of any change was in the summer before he was killed. I was invited out to the soldier's home to spend the night. As I entered the room near night, he was sitting near a window intently reading his Bible. I approached him. I said, I'm glad to see you profitably engaged. Yes, said he, I am profitably engaged. Well, said I, if you have re recovered from your skepticism, I am sorry to say that I have not. Looking me earnestly in the face and placing his hand on my shoulder, he said, You are wrong, Speed. Take all of this book upon reason that you can, and the balance on faith, and you will live and die a happier and a better man. Did you catch that? They speak a little differently than we do. Yeah. He, he said, You are wrong, Speed. Take all this book upon reason that you can. What he's saying is, the part that you can reason with yourself and agree with, agree with that. But the rest of it that you can't receive by reason, believe that part on faith. And if you do that, you'll live, what does he say? You'll live and die a happier and a better man. Amen. So that's one of our, one of our nation's greatest presidents and, and the one who established Thanksgiving. And, and yeah, you know what? <clears throat> the, the Bible even tells us to be skeptics sometimes, right? The Bible says, be like the Bereans. Don't take anything, don't take anything for granted. Anything a preacher tells you or some other person tells you or, uh, you know, something that you might hear or read on the internet, although everything on the internet is true. <laughs> and on TV. And on TV. I love that commercial where the, the, the girl says she's got a date and he's a French model. Yeah. There's some big old ugly hairy guy comes out and he goes, oh yeah, bonjour. Yeah. So, <laughs> that makes me laugh. But anyway, but the Bible says be like the Bereans. Don't take anything hook, line, and sinker except this book. Amen. Check it out in here. Yeah. See what it says. See what the Bible says about your, your situation. And that's what Abraham Lincoln was telling his good friend Joshua Speed. The part that you could reason and agree with, agree with that. But then believe the rest of it on faith. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> it's a good thing to be a person of faith. Because without faith it's impossible to please God, right? Amen. And I want to please Him. Do you want to please Him? Yes. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we open your word today, thank you, Father, that your word is true. We exalt you and praise you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who helps, who helps us receive your word today. Father, thank you that, that it, is, it is greater than us. It is more than us. It's more than we can uh, comprehend. But Lord, we know that your Holy Spirit can make it real in our lives and make it beneficial to us. It has, it has the power to transform us into the image of Christ. And that's what we ask today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to read you one other thing about Abraham Lincoln. Um, I'm going to read you something about James Madison today, too. So, you guys like history, right? Yeah. I, got, I, I, I don't know if it's 4th of July or sometime. I, I, I read a bunch of quotes, and you guys really, I got a lot more comments on that than anything. Maybe that's because I wasn't speaking, but just read it, huh? Oh, just a joke. Uh, Okay. In the midst of the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln initiated the first annual National Day of Thanksgiving and praise on October 3rd, 1863, issuing a formal proclamation passed by an act of Congress. You know, Thanksgiving didn't start in 1863. It started, you know, 
We could have taken all the way back to the pilgrims, right? Had the Indians not helped them out, uh, they would have all been they would have all been uh, destroyed and died and for lack of food. And and the Indians helped them out, and and they celebrated Thanksgiving. Um, not as a national holiday, but just as a real Thanksgiving. You, know, you, you survived your first winter with the help of, when, not on your own volition, but because somebody helped you out. That's something to give thanks for, right? Amen. Amen. So here's what Abraham Lincoln says. No human counsel hath devised, nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the Most High God, who while dealing with us in anger for our sins, hath nevertheless remembered mercy. And he was quoting from Habakkuk chapter 3, where Habakkuk prayed, God in your wrath, don't forget mercy. And you know, we, we in our nation today are in that very same place. We are in a place where, um, you know, we may be, well, we definitely are being chastised for our sins. But we can pray that same prayer with the same faith that Abraham Lincoln prayed. Um, that Lord, in your wrath, remember mercy. And remember this, God always proclaims himself as a God of mercy, of a, of a, a forgiver. Um, yes, he is the judge as well. But his, his word tells us that mercy triumphs over evil. Amen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mercy always triumphs. President Lincoln went on, he says this, It has seemed fit to me and proper that they should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people. I dare, do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also those who are at sea, those who are sojourning in foreign lands, to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. And I recommend to them that while offering up the ascriptions justly due him for such singular deliverances and blessings, they do also with humble penance for our national perverseness and disobedience. You understand that the whole nation was at war. Brothers were fighting brothers. Um, we were, the, you know, slavery was a, a major issue. <coughs> Families were for, you know, raising the musket and the sword to family members. Uh, it was a dark time in our nation and when President Lincoln, um, and certainly we all know that that's not God's will, right? <clears throat> he says, he goes on and he says this, I recommend to them while offering up the inscriptions justly due to him for such singular del deliverances and blessings, they do also with humble penance for our national perverseness and disobedience commend to his tender care all those who have become widows, orphans, mourners, or sufferers in the lamentable, lamentable civil strife in which we are unavoidably engaged and fervently implore the interposition of the Almighty Hand to heal the wounds of the nation and to restore it as soon as may be consistent with the divine purposes to the full enjoyment of peace, harmony, tranquility, in union. It's hard to read some of, my, some of those words. But you know, as I, as I was reading those this week, it, re, it reminded me of the fact that on a global scale, we're in the same position. You know, we, we really need to give thanks for all that God has done for us. Like Bob was saying this morning, that we give thanks to God for uh, the fact that we live in, in the nation that we live in. But we also have to remember Christians and other people, uh, you know, of other faiths who are spread all over the world, who are in the midst of persecution and in the midst of uh, war and battle, that are not as uh, as blessed. Um, there are a lot of people who have lost, you know, family members, loved ones, friends, um, and we need to pray for them. And so this Thanksgiving, when you sit down at your table. Give thanks for all that God has given you. Give thanks for the family. I mean, that's the best part. You know, having all your family around you. To, to be able to sit there together and, uh, and, you know, see the new ones and the old ones. And, uh, and understand that everything, that everything that we have came from God. Everything, every blessing that, that we have 
is by God's grace. The health that you have, you know, the fact that nobody, you, you know, you, you got to church today and nobody shot at you. Praise God. You know, we, we can worship without, uh, without fear. We can, you know, we'll, we'll all, we all look pretty well fed. You know, we have much to be thankful for. And I was reading some, some quotes about gratitude this week. One of them was this. It, and I don't even remember who said it, but it was, it was just one thing. If you can't be thankful for, for what you have, you will never be thankful for what you will have. You know? It's kind of like tithing, you know? I said, if you can't tithe on $10, you'll never be able to tithe on 100 Right? Say amen. amen. Or oh me, because it's true anyway. <laughs> How many of everybody gets serious when we talk about money? But anyway, we... It's the truth. You know, we need to be thankful right now. Not not look to God and be and be bitter or be uh, um, in what's the right word? Envy of our neighbors and say, Well, I don't have, God never gave me gave me as much as He's given them. Blah, blah, blah. No, be thankful for what you have. If you're not thankful for what you have, uh, you probably won't be blessed with any more. And, and those are those are wise words. Um, I think too many times, too many times we as, as people uh, take for granted all the blessings that we have. I can guarantee you that every person in this room, and I know a lot of you have gone through some pretty stuff, tough stuff, even tough stuff this year. Um, but if you sit down and you start counting, if you put stuff in the plus column and stuff in the negative column, all of you are going to come up in the plus column. Amen. 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 You're here breathing. Amen. You're here alive. That's right. You got to sing praise to Jesus today. And and I know all you're going to eat today, so that's that's a good thing. But you know, we we have much to be thankful for. And I don't want you to miss that because <clears throat> if we I've said it many, many times, the number one attribute of any Christian should be thankfulness. Because all that we have, we owe to our Savior, our Lord, and our God. Amen. Have your Bibles. Turn to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. be deceived my beloved my beloved brethren I got my King James, new King James here today so not the NIV so if you're, if you're confused that's probably why every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning you know, all the things about Thanksgiving that we're going to get, we'll, we'll experience this week that we were, I was just talking about. Family being with family. You know, plenty to eat. The joy uh, of, of celebrating together. Of spending time together. Maybe seeing people that you haven't seen. The warmth of that experience. All of those things. And there's countless more. All of those good things come from God. He, James tells us, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. All of those things come from God. You know, we talk about this. This might seem a little dark, but it'll be all right. You'll, you'll make it through. You know, we talked about the second death. The death and the second death and the second death being separated, being eternally separated from God. And that's what, why Jesus came to the earth. That's why he shed his blood so we would never have to experience that separation from God in eternity. And all the things that you'll experience this Thanksgiving, um, even, even with some of your family members you might not get along with, you know, you still love them, right? They still love you. All of that comes from God. And, and in the second death, being separated from God, in, in, that, in that place of eternal punishment, there will be none of those things. There will be no more... There will be no love. There will, there will be no peace. 
There will be no comfort. Uh, there will be no happy reunions. There will only be sadness, only tears, only, only the weeping and gnashing of teeth, as Jesus put it. So we give thanks because we know that all those good and perfect gifts come from God. And, and, and when, we, when, we start from that, when we start from that perspective, that gives us a good foundation. It gives us a foundation to build on because everything that I have, every good thing, even, even the things that I feel like that I've worked for myself, God is the one who gave me the ability to do that. Amen. God is the one who gave me the opportunity to do that. And so even though I feel like I might have done it myself, I know that it was all impossible without God. And if I start from that foundation, it's very easy to say, God, thank you. I honor you today. Even in, the, even in the difficult times, even when things aren't going just your way, we can still say thank you, God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> he goes on and he says this. <clears throat> in him there is no variation or shadow of turning of his own will. He brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be the first, be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. I'm curious to see what it says. Through the world of first fruit, he might be, we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. You know, the, the Bible tells us that, that Jesus was the first fruits. And if you go back to that, that time of Thanksgiving... Uh, it was really at Easter time. Russ could probably fill you in a little better than me, but it was the beginning of the barley harvest, the first day. Um, that's why on the, the day that Christ was resurrected, the Jews would have been um, celebrating uh, first fruits, the day called first fruits, when they would bring the first of the barley harvest, and and the priests would bring it into the store or bring it into the to the temple, and they would wave it before God as a thanksgiving offering. To God as the first fruits of the harvest. So acknowledging that, that if, and giving that first fruits to God, and that all, because they gave the first fruits to God, it all belonged to God. And the rest of the harvest would be, would be plentiful as well, as what they were acknowledging. And so the Bible calls Jesus the first fruit of many brethren. Do you know he's not the first one? Or the last one. Or he is the first one, but not the last one. To be resurrected from the dead forever. Amen. One of the things the Bible says about us. Those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I like the way Paul said it. He said, we don't know what we will be. But we'll be like him. Amen. Amen. We don't know what we'll be, but we'll be like him. One thing we know about him. He is, he is raised forevermore. And lives eternally with our Heavenly Father. Amen. Right? That's what the Amen. Bible tells us about Jesus. And He's the first fruits. And we are the first fruits. Is what is what James says. That He's created us and brought us forth that we might be the first fruits. That we might be sons and daughters of the Most High God. If there's anything that you want to give thanks for this Thursday or any, every day that you wake up as a believer in Jesus Christ, wake up and you say, Father, thank you that I am a daughter or son of the Most High God. Amen. Amen. Wow. That's right. talking about God. Not that we can boast in anything, but our boast is in the Lord, right? Hallelujah. I want to read you something by James Madison while we're here in James. <clears throat> James Madison was a, uh, he, he, was, he was a president as well. In 1815, there was a Thanksgiving Day proclamation that James Madison made. And he says this, no people ought to feel greater obligations to celebrate the goodness of the great disposer of events of the destiny of the nations than the people of the United States. What he's saying is if there's anybody who, who ought to be given thanks, it's us. Amen. And to the same divine author of every good and perfect gift, we are indebted for all those privileges and advantages, religious as well as civil, which are so richly enjoyed in this favored land. And I'll tell you this, Christian, American, if we would begin to thank God for our country, rather than speak evil against it, things would be better. 
You know, that's one of the things that Pastor Sammy, and I've, I've tried to break myself of, when Pastor Sammy was here, for those of you who might be visiting, Pastor Sammy's a pastor from Kenya who's a, been a friend for, I don't know, 15, 16 years, something like that. But um, he said he came and he said, everywhere I go, he was here this summer for, I don't know, a month or so, and he said, everywhere I go in America, I hear Americans cursing their country, speaking evil of their country. He said, I want to assure you that God is still blessing America, and this is still the best place to live on the earth. Amen. And so, that was good instruction. You know, we, we, as, we as Christians need to realize that what comes out of our mouth matters. Okay? That's right. You know, the Bible tells us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. It tells us that we'll be, we will be fulfilled by the fruit of our lips. Our lives will be fulfilled by the fruit of our lips. And so what we say matters. What we say can, what, what you speak can, can determine whether you walk in blessings or whether you walk in cursing. And we as a nation, as we curse, if we continue to curse our nation, and, and stop giving thanks for it and for what God is doing. I, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying everything's perfect. It's not. You know, the things that are not right, we need to be asking God to forgive us for. And the things that, and, the every, and for everything else, we need to be praising Him and thanking Him for the goodness that He has bestowed on us as Americans and as, and as Christians. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you have your slip. You, you're already in your Bible, right? I already read James Madison. We're doing pretty good. You might be eating in less than two hours. <laughs> ah, if you could laugh. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter eight. Deuteronomy chapter eight. We're going to read eleven through twenty. Okay. He says this. This, this is a quiz. What's Deuteronomy mean? Come on, somebody. What? What am? Law. The law, that's right. But there's something else. What's, what's the do mean? D-E-U. Two. Two. The second giving of the law. God gave Moses the law in Leviticus. And then he gave he, uh, and in, in Exodus and in Leviticus, and then he gives it again in Deuteronomy. So this is the second giving of the law. All right. See, you learned something today. That's good. <clears throat> Chapter eight, verse starting at verse eleven. It says, "Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping His commandments, His judgments, and His statutes, which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full." And have built beautiful homes and dwell in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply. And your silver and your gold are multiplied. And all that you have is multiplied. When your heart is lifted up. And you forget the Lord your God. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt. From the house of bondage. Who led you through that great and terrible wilderness. In which, we, in which were fiery serpents and scorpions. And the thirsty land where, where there was no water. Who brought water for you out of the flinty rock. Who fed you in the wilderness with manna, with your father, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you to do you good in the end. Then you say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his, co his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish as the nations which the Lord destroys before you. So you shall perish because you would not be obedient to the voice of your Lord. And my batteries have given up the coast. <laughs> Uh, 
I'm thankful for Caleb. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What he's, what Moses, or what, yeah, what, what's being said here is this. And, it's, and it really speaks to, to, you know this is about Israel, but it really speaks to us as a nation as well. Don't, beware that you don't forget God. Don't forget that every good and perfect gift come, comes from God. Don't forget, and he says, you know, when, you're, when your belly's full and you're leaning back in your house, in your, your nice house and your nice clothes, and you got money in the bank and everything's going good, and it's just, it's every, you know, and you sit back and you start to think, wow, look what I've done. I've done pretty well for myself. God says when you do that, and you begin, you begin to worship other gods. See, the, we can begin to worship ourselves as a god, or our wealth as a god, or our position as a god. When you do that, God says, "Look out, because it can all be taken away from you. You, you will, you will step back into that place of cursing and not blessing when we forget God. When we forget." That everything, that every good and perfect gift that we have, all the blessings, God, you know, he's speaking to the, he's speaking to the Israelites, and if you think about the Israelites, they were in bondage. Well, we as a nation, we were in bondage to the British, right? God set us free from the, from the, the tyranny of the British. We went through a lot of, we went through a lot of hard times. The Israelites were, you know, they did uh, 40 years walking around the, the uh, in the desert. You know, we had a civil war where brother fought brother. Family member fought family member. We've gone through some difficult times too. But God has brought us through those things. And God has blessed us as a nation. And if we forget, you know, one of the coolest things I've ever done was go to Washington, D.C. This, this summer. Or it was late, early, late summer, early fall. And to see... To see our, what the truth of, of our nation is. That yes, we were founded on, our nation is founded on Christian principles of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, and you know, not that, not that we are meant to be, what's the, a, a government declared Christian nation. But the very fact of the matter is most of the founding fathers were Christians. And fervent Christians, and to see the you know to see the uh, the rich history that we had, and our founding fathers knew that you know what it was not it was not by their strong hand that they de that they defeated the strongest military and the strongest navy in the world at the time. That you know the, at the British the British Empire at that time, the they it was said of them that the sun never set on their empire. And some ragtag people uh, from the from North American continent, who most of us, or a lot, a good percentage of us, who came over were sent over here because they emptied the jails and sent us here. I'm, my uh, um, dad's brother years ago did a uh, you know that ancestry deal, track your ancestors back, and it's. You know, unfortunately, I, we, we weren't, um, like, lineage from the king. We were Scottish outlaws. Probably poaching deer would be my guess. <laughs> so, you know, <clears throat> there were a lot of indentured servants, people who were so poor that they, that in order to get here, they had to come here and work for seven years to, just to gain their own freedom for somebody. And so these, this ragtag bunch of people who came to this land defeated the greatest army and the greatest navy in the world at the time. And the founding fathers knew that it wasn't because they were so great. It was because they served a great God. Amen. Amen. And, and the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, all those historical docu documents speak about the providence of God. Understanding that God's hand was on us the whole time. And God is saying and telling us, don't forget me. 
I'm the one who brought you here. I'm the one who brought you through. I'm the one who provided for you to get you to this place. If you forget me and you turn your back on me and you, and you begin to serve other gods, I will, I will punish you. I will come back and I will punish you. And that's a good thing, right? Because his punishment is not to punish us. His punishment is to turn us back to him. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I burned myself the other day. I'm proud to say I did not swear. But it reminded me of, of something. I got the, I branded my palm in my hand. Um, I'm thankful for the chastening of the Lord. Because do you know how bad it would have been if I had grabbed a hold of that? I, I was making uh, I was making chicken and noodles for something. Oh, for Bobette. Um, yeah, pray for Bobette, our uh, darling. Her mother passed away this week. But anyway, I was making noodles, and the, the, my thing I was stirring with was metal, and it had fallen down beside the fire, and I didn't see it. And I reached down, and I grabbed it to stir the noodles, and it was really hot. And I let go really fast. You know, when you hear your hand go, <laughs> but I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that because it could have been worse. And and we should always remember that and thank God for the chastening of the Lord because His chastening is to bring us back. Amen. His chastening. You know, I thank God that everything. Every, when I get away from God, things don't go really well. Mm -hmm. You know, because we remember, hey, I need to go. I need to be back in the presence of God. And he warns us as a nation, don't forget. Amen. So when you're sitting down, every time you sit down in your house, understand that it came from God. Amen. When you sit down to, to take that fork and stuff your face with stuffing and turkey and all that, it came from God. God's the one who blessed you. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Last thing, turn to Psalm chapter 103. Like Russ on, on Christmas vacation. Woo, look at the time. <laughs> Reminds me of the Chinese restaurant. We call it 10 minutes. Because it doesn't matter what you order out there, you know? <laughs> yep. Chicken, garlic, sauce, spicy, 10 minutes. Girl, so ten minutes. That lady out there is amazing. She remembers you. She remembers everything about you. She made a great pastor. <laughs> she, I mean, you go, you walk in, she knows exactly what you want. And, and I was sitting there the other day. You know, probably eighty percent of the people that came in, she knew what they wanted, and the rest of them, I assume, were new. All right, Psalm one hundred three. This be good. This might be a good one to. To read before your Thanksgiving dinner. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. I like the way the psalmist listed that. Because my number one need is for forgiveness. My number one need is to have my sins blotted out and taken away from me. That I can fellowship with God. That I can, that I can come before Him and speak to Him. And, and the only way that that happens is by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That he has, made, he has opened that door. And He has, he has taken away my iniquities. He heals me from all my diseases. He redeems my life from destruction. Do you know without him, our, my life would be, and your life would be destined for destruction. But with him, with him, he has a plan for you. Amen. He has a plan to build you up and to, and to bring you to a good end. <clears throat> he crowns your life with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts 
to the children of Israel, the Lord is merciful and gracious and slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The wages of my sin is death, but God has chosen to give me life through his son. Amen. Amen. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. And you know that fear is a reverent fear. As a father, or as a child, fears their father and respects their father and their mother. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. And his righteousness to, to children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those who remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength and to do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all the places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. <laughs> And every good and perfect gift comes from God. And church, we need to be thankful for what God has given us because he has given us all things. Even his, his only son. Who bled and died so that we can be the children of the most high God. Amen. 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 Stand to your feet. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we stand here today. We remember you. We remember you. You are the one who has called us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. You are the one who has called us from the, from the bonds of our sin and the slavery of our iniquities. And you have given us freedom. And those who are free in Christ are free indeed. Father, thank you that you have, you have brought us into this place that we live in a wonderful place. We live in um, a nation that is blessed. Father, you've given us uh, so much. And Lord, we repent of the times that we have looked and at what you have given us and put into our hands and said, that's mine. Because it's not ours. It all belongs to you. Father, let us never forget you. And when we do forget you, Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit would remind us that you would, you would make us realize that in you we live and move and have our being, and without you we are nothing. Father, I thank you that all things are possible with you, and so little is possible without you. Lord, I pray a blessing today on this congregation and to these people. Father, I pray that a, just a spirit of thanksgiving would reside in their hearts. And Lord, uh, if, if there are any who, who have that spirit of envy or spirit of, uh, of strife, Lord, I pray that you cleanse them by the blood of Jesus, that we might be thankful for everything that you, you've given us. Father, that we might be good stewards over the lives that you have provided for us. Lord, bless every home this Thanksgiving. Bless every, every marriage, every child. Lord, we give you thanks. And honor you and praise you for who you are and for what you have done. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes. I just want to say the Lord is affected my spirit today. The Lord affected my spirit today in the fact that what he had changed my prayer focus over the last two weeks is exactly what Pastor was talking about. Because instead of just praying and asking and asking and asking, he knows what we need. We need to be thankful for what he's already given, what he's about to give, and the, the, 
things that we don't see at this point in time, but thanking him for what he's bringing in for our provisions. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Confirmation is good. Hey, I want to encourage you. I want to pray before we go and bless the food. But uh, I would encourage you all to stay and eat. I don't care if you brought anything or didn't bring anything. I think I, we, we, we will have more than enough. And enough is abundance in, in the Lord. Amen? Amen? Father, bless the food today that we're about to receive. Father, thank you for every hand that, that got up early this morning or lay, stayed up late last night to prepare it. Lord, I pray that we just have a wonderful time of fellowshipping together. And Lord, thank you for the practice that we won't mess up our Thanksgiving dinner on Thursday. We've got to practice today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That was funny. You should have seen that today. I'm sure they're probably ready for you in the back. If you just make your way back through that way and pick up your plate, all the food is in the hallway. And uh, Oh, one other thing. Do you remember? There will be no Wednesday service Wednesday. 